Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Zero, and welcome to Extra Case, My Girlfriend's Secrets, which is a horror game where your new girlfriend is hiding a dark secret. I'm Marty, a male college student. Not too long ago, I was in a horrible car accident where I lost my parents, my only friend, and my memory. So I'm still adjusting to this life. Still, my life isn't all bad. So to provide some quick context, I've actually played some other games from this developer. One was called, like, The Cannibal Boy. I believe all their games take place in the same universe, but this does not seem to feature the main cast of The Cannibal Boy or anything. And I believe this game is standalone, it just takes place in the same universe. You might see some cameos or something. Marty, I'm so happy you're here. I miss you so much. I think her name is Marty Stew. Let's confirm that. I think I saw that on the, the game page. I just saw you yesterday, silly. I still miss you, okay? I really started going out with a girl. Her name is Sally, and she's super cute. Though maybe a little clingy. She's like a little bunny, Ben. Today is Sally's birthday. She invited me to her house tonight to eat some homemade cookies. We've both been looking forward to this day. Here, this Nazar for you. It's a talisman against evil. I bought it from an exorcist, and I swear it actually works. You mean Bruce? Ha, oh, thanks. Huh? What's wrong? Ha! I was wondering if she was gonna like touch it and be like, it's like, oh, this stops evil, and her hands just burns. It just makes me feel a little nauseous. I don't think I can take this. I'm so sorry. I'll get you something else. No, I'm the one who should be sorry. I wasted your gift by being evil. This is not the first time Sally's turned down one of my gifts. I've never had another girlfriend, and I have no friends or family to ask. So I don't know if this kind of thing is normal. Am I really that bad at choosing gifts? Well, uh, I guess I should go to the kitchen to bake the cookies. Let me give you a quick tour first, though. This is the bathroom. The kitchen's that way. Feel free to check out any of the other rooms. One exception, though. Don't ever, ever open the door to my room. Got it? It's gonna be a red herring. This is a nice place. It's like our birthday gifts in there. Okay. Sure. Ah, you're such a good boy. Good boys like you get rewarded at night. Ah? Huh? Um, what? With cookies, I mean. Yeah. Cookies. Ah, actually, don't mind that. Yeah, cookies are fun. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Oh, Marty. It's so easy to tell what you're thinking. Just like all the other guys. Other guys? What? I didn't catch that last part. It's nothing. Sally's full name is Sarah Sweet. And she's a really nice girl. Just like her name suggests. She's my girlfriend, and I adore her. But somehow I feel she's hiding something from me. Like there's a side to her I don't know about. I guess I'll look around to pass the time. Okay, let's look around. This thing reminds me of why Sally and I started going out. At the time, I was in the hospital, recovering from the car accident. And she was a fellow inpatient there. That was where we suddenly got trapped in a crazy, paranormal hazard. A bunch of people got possessed by evil spirits and went on to attack more people. Fortunately, someone called an exorcist named Bruce. So Bruce is, um, kind of the semi-main character of, I think, most of these games. Ah, help! An evil spirit! Hey you! Gatch! Use it against that thing! Wow, thank you so much. 
A thousand will do. Huh? And as are as a thousand dollars. Pay up. Wait, what? Anyway, thanks to Bruce's help, I not only survived, but also managed to save Sally. Maybe it was a suspension bridge effect, but very soon after that, Sally and I started going out. Yeah, so also I'll note that, um, if you haven't seen the other games, that Bruce, without spoiling too much, Bruce and his sidekick are not the nicest of people. So, when they say you owe me a thousand dollars, they mean you owe me a thousand dollars for saving you. A photo of Sally's mother. Sally once told me that she was never close to her mother as a child. Even now, they only see each other a few times a year. Sleeping pills. Apparently Sally had been hospitalized in the chronic ward of psychiatric department. She hasn't told me what her illness is exactly, but she doesn't want to talk about it. I'm not going to ask. She's entitled to her privacy after all. Like, can we just like leave? Hold up. We just check this? No, okay. This one looks a bit like Sally. I guess Sally must have made these herself. She told me about this hobby before. I got this for you. You like to collect dolls, right? No, apparently. I, I bet. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh dear. I'm sorry. I don't actually collect dolls at all. I just like to make them by hand. That's actually not... weird. Actually, when you think about it. She could just be like a craftsman type. Because buying something and receiving something is much different than like making something, you know what I mean? Oh, oops. Thank you though. John. John? I'm, I mean Marty. John. Who's that? Nobody. I just said the wrong name. Poor Marty. Sally has secrets. Secrets she can't tell me. Like, I'm really, really curious if it's gonna be like a bait and switch. Like, it's not what you think, you know what I mean? Sally's holding a kitchen knife in her left hand, ready to chop up a big chocolate bar. Huh. But her hand is paused midair, and she stares blankly at Hannah. Sally? Sally? Sally! Huh? Marty? Are you okay? I just... Get distracted sometimes. It seems to happen a lot. If you're tired, you should get some rest. Yeah. Did you need anything? I was worried you'd be lonely, so I want to chat a bit. And to find out your secrets. Oh, okay. What do you want to talk about? You're left-handed. Yes, you never noticed? Let's take note of that, by the way. Why do you like me? Well, probably because you're the most handsome guy I've ever met. Really? Really? But no other girl has ever said I'm remotely good-looking. Well, I mean, after all, love is blind. You, you better not be like, something weird like, you're the most handsome guy, internally. And I don't mean your personality, I mean your organs. Hey, well, I think you're super pretty too. Oh, sure, because love sees no faults, right? No, I, I bet any guy would say you're really beautiful. Huh? The cookies you bake are amazing, and I love that you make me feel needed. I'm so lucky to be your boyfriend. It's like a dream. Oh, don't say that. You're making me blush. 
The doll resembles you a bit. It's supposed to be my sister. She's the one who made it. Ah. So your sister made this doll. What she's like? Her name is Sarah, which is similar to my name, Sarah. As a child, I was really attached to Sarah, always following her around and imitating everything she did. The reason I love making dolls is because that's what she loved. But Sarah eventually got annoyed. She made me this Sarah doll and said, Take this, just don't follow me around anymore, okay? I hugged this doll and cried and cried. Sarah doesn't want me anymore. Thinking back, I think Sarah must have hated me ever since we were little. Did something else happen between Sally and her sister? This is just me talking, but I feel like if she really hated you and didn't love you even a tiny bit, she wouldn't have made this Sarah doll for you at all. Maybe you're right. I'll never know what Sarah actually thought about me. Never. What does she mean by that? Hmm. I'm out of topics. I'll look around to see if there's anything else to talk about. You got any secrets around here? This whole game's about finding your secrets. The scripture, the grandmistresses of words. All men are created fools, and for this they are full of uncertainty. Worship Nya, and embrace the precognitive dreams granted to Ponvi. Kill thy weak ego and trust thy future to Nya. Preparing for myself for my future be the one true path to happiness. Precognitive dreams. This Nya can make people have dreams that tell the future. Haha, <laughs> I bet you how sweet that would be. It could tell me how my relationship with Sally is going to pan out. Yeah. The oil painting. The ass portrait. I don't know why, but this painting makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah. I think it's a deity of that new religious movement that has a small but devoted following. Does Sally believe in this kind of thing? Oh, the sofa sure is comfortable, though. Better save my game, because I'm not going in this room. Being told not to open this door makes me so curious. Is there something in here? She needs to hide. No, I can't. I'll look at some other stuff to distract myself. So Nia is also from another game. I haven't played it. Um, they made it like an Isekai JRPG game. <laughs> Uh, not a horror game whatsoever, and um, Nia comes from that. What do you have that portrait Nia? Do you believe in that religion? Um, well, that's what my mother believes in. My mother loved my father so much, but he died when I was three. After that, the cult consumed my mother's life. She paid a fortune to the Grand Mistress and neglected my sister and me. Oh, I see. So I was very lonely as a child. What do I say in this kind of situation? I've seen everything there is to see and I can't find anything more to chat about. But the cookies aren't ready yet. What should I do next? Nap. The only thing I haven't checked out is the door to Sally's room. Go into Sally's room. This door. It's calling to me. The more I try to ignore it, the more I want to open it. Do it. Do not open it. I chose not to open the door, but it wasn't because I respected Sally's privacy. I was just afraid. I was afraid of ruining our relationship, of course. But even more of discovering what she was hiding. Good for you, Protag. You managed to avert yourself from a horrible fate. For now. Marty, the cookies are done. Huh? Alright. 
You didn't open the door to my room, did you? If it was up to me, you would've. Huh. <laughs> well, I almost opened it. That's fine, then. Are they good? Oh man, so good. You could sell these. Aren't you gonna have any? It makes me happy just watching you eat. Besides, I can always make more for myself. What are you talking about? Today's your birthday. And food tastes so much better when you eat it together. Come on, open up. Oh, okay. Good? Of course, I picked them myself. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Marty, you're such a sweet, innocent guy. A guy like you shouldn't be dating me. What? Nothing. It's late. You should be getting home. Oh, yeah, I guess. You seem disappointed. Or did you want me to say... No one else is home tonight, so you should stay over. No, 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 I, I should really go. You're so cute. I love you. That's why I have to say goodbye, Marnie. After that, Sally started avoiding me. She didn't reply to my messages or answer my calls. I thought about going to her house directly, but I didn't have the courage. I was afraid to ask her why she was distancing herself from me, whatever her reasons were. And so, our relationship just faded out. If I had known this would happen, I would have opened that door back then. That way, at the very least, I might have known why things ended this way. Well, so when something else is going to end pretty soon if you open that door. But it doesn't matter now. Nobody can rewind time. No more ending one. The fade out. Number of ending scene one out ten. Oh boy, ten endings. Here we go. <laughs> Did I hear someone say they want to re rewind time? To salvage a relationship. Very well. I shall play Cupid for the two of you. And grant you that wish. With my precognitive dreams. When did I fall asleep on the sofa? I think I had some kind of long dream. But what did I dream about? Huh. I can't remember. Before I fell asleep, I think I was trying to decide whether to open this door or not. I don't know why, but I want to open it so badly. I just need to know what Sally's secrets are. Secret. Oh well, let's do it. This door, it's calling to me. And the more I try to ignore it, the more I want to open it. Open the door. Good. 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 Oh no, no. It's begun. Title drops. Photo frames. That's a lot of photos. Whose photos are they? Her ex-boyfriends? Oh, it looks kinda like me. Who's this? Why does he look so much like me? Thank you, John. I see. So this is John. Sally! I told you not to open the door to my room. John is your ex-boyfriend, isn't he? Yes. And my very first love. Oh. 
I knew it. Sally was very kind to me from the moment we met. I was always confused why such a sweet girl had noticed me. I guess I was just a substitute for John. So what happened? Did they break up? Where is John now? In heaven. What? Two years ago today, my mother suddenly came home for my birthday, which was a very rare thing. John and my sister were also here at the time. I was so happy, and I asked John to take the four of us out for a drive. Oh no, don't tell me there was an accident. Yeah. I was very lucky that I didn't get seriously injured. My mother was fine too, she only got knocked out. But my sister lay there dying. And it was even worse for John. His limbs had been torn off, all I could do was watch as he died. That's awful. Even now, I have dreams at night where I'm searching for John's arms and legs. Um... I'm the one who killed John and my sister. So Sally lost everything in the car crash, just like me. But in her case, her own memories have been tormenting her. Sally, that's not your fault, I promise. I didn't know what to say, so I just hugged her. This time, Sally didn't reject my gesture. She still let me hold her, and her trembling body slowly calmed down. Are you okay? I'll admit it that first, I did see you as a substitute. Man, I thought I was prepared for this. But actually hearing that from Sally's mouth hurts. But I've really come to care for you. I love your kindness, and most of all, how straightforward and innocent you are. Yeah? I didn't know how to tell you about John. I was afraid that telling you would put a wall up between us. But if I didn't, I knew I'd brood over it forever. I'm so sorry, Marnie. At first, all I could think about was how jealous I was that John still occupied such a big portion of Sally's heart. John's dead, Marty! But now, Sally's tears had pushed all that out of my mind. I just wanted to comfort Sally, even if it meant pretending I didn't care about John. Thanks. I'm glad you told me about this, Sally. Huh? He was your first love, and yet you two par were parted forever in such a traumatic way. I'm sure the whole John left in your heart will never really go away. I can't feel it, and I don't want to pretend your past with John never happened either. All I can do is try to make your future a little happier. After all, I'm your boyfriend. Now and always. Marty. This isn't so bad. Sally and I held each other tightly for a long, long time. Our relationship became even closer than before. And although my gut told me there was actually more to Sally's secret than she let on, I was okay with that. Just as I was okay about Sally's past with John. And I was willing to believe that Sally and I would live... No more ending too. Happily ever after? Why did it cut off at the end? Number ending scene 2 out of 10. Marty, why did it cut off at the end? When did I fall asleep on the sofa? I think I had some kind of long dream. What did I dream about? Hmm. I can't remember. Before I fell asleep, I think I was trying to decide whether to open this door or not. Somehow I feel there are still more secrets hidden behind this door. Still, <laughs> what am I saying? I've never even gone in this room. Okay, I guess I have to check it out. No, you just like plowed right into here. Photo frames. That's a lot of photos. Whose photos are they? 
This time a different photo is like lit up. A guy. He's pretty good looking. See, this one does not look like me though. Who's this? Why does he look so much like me? And who's this? Why are the photos of these guys in Sally's room? They don't look like they're from a boy band. So who are they? What about the last one? How does Sally know them? What about the last one? Sally! I told you not to open the door to my room. I'm sorry, I just... It's fine. I had to tell you sooner or later anyway. These photos... Why are they so important to you? Because they're... My exes. Is this game gonna turn to like... What's the one... That was adapted into a movie? I never read the comics or graphic novels. Scott Pilgrim. Let's turn to Scott Pilgrim. I won't lie. The word exes came as a shock to me. But Sally's such a great girl. I shouldn't be surprised that she's dated other guys. A good boyfriend should be understanding and accept her past. Hey, uh, that's not a big deal. You didn't need to hide it from me. Well, that's not all. Huh? They're all... dead. Huh. Wait, what? All the guys I fell in love with... died. Okay. You must think I'm crazy. But my mother told me ever since I was a child that the women of our bloodline are doomed to have our husbands die. That's why my father and my mother's father died early. I didn't believe it at first. But my first boyfriend died. And so did my second and third. All in accidents, too. After that, I had to believe it was true. I'm afraid being with me will kill you one day, too. But I didn't know how to tell you why I was afraid. You must think I'm nuts for believing in something like that crazy, right? The old me might have laughed and said Sally was being silly. But after surviving that paranormal hazard in the hospital, I now believe that some things in this world are beyond the reach of human understanding. Maybe the secret is just John as a ghost. And he's just taking out the competition. I go, oh, I'm not gonna let you go. Yeah, kind of like that movie with the, the clay urns and the hands and whatever, the ghost thing. And really, whether Sally's actually doomed to have her boyfriend's die is beside the point. The bigger problem is that she blames herself for being responsible for their deaths. Sally, I can see how having all your boyfriends die in accidents would convince you that you're cursed. You must have suffered so much from blaming yourself. Marty? Your fear of me getting hurt shows you just how much you care about me. But you had to bear this burden all on your own, because you didn't know how to tell me. Sally, you're amazing. You're the bravest, most caring person I know. Marty, no one has ever been so understanding. I love you so much, Marty. But the more I love you, the more afraid I am of staying in this relationship. I'm really afraid of losing you. Is that where the one ending cut off because of an accident? Whether you're really doomed to lose your boyfriends or not, I'm not afraid. But... I understand, though. If something happened to me, you'd blame yourself to death. Even that chance is less than 1%. It's not fair if you end up torturing yourself. That's why I have to leave the choice up to you, Sally. Do we stay in this relationship? Or not? If going out with you means ruining your life, maybe we should... break up. Just knowing you're doing okay every time you post something online will be enough to make me happy. Even if you aren't my boyfriend anymore. I see. You're such a nice guy. You deserve... a better girl. Even if we break up, and I still keep on loving you. You're so silly. This is how my first love ended. I was heartbroken, but never showed it. 
I knew Sally would be watching me, and Sally would want me to see me happy. So I pretended to be happy. Because my happiness was Sally's happiness, and Sally's happiness was my happiness. My pretend happiness didn't seem so pretend anymore. No bonding triple. Pretend happiness. This guy may never like layer to that twist. Cause we're still early in the game. When I fall asleep on the sofa, I think I had some kind of long dream. But what did I dream about? Huh. I can't remember. Before I fell asleep, I think I was trying to decide whether to open this door or not. It's just deja vu, I know I've been here before. I feel like <laughs> I really feel like I've opened this door before. I want to open the door and uncover Sally's secrets. 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 Sally's secrets. Okay, last portrait. Photo frames. That's a lot of photos. Whose photos are they? You see, initially I thought, oh, the twist was gonna be like... She's like, harvesting things from each boyfriend and she was gonna make like a Frankenstein of like, John or something, or her original boyfriend. I mean, I could still be right, but that, that was just like my guess. I play too many horror games now, you know what I mean? It's just, I just go to the worst. But suppose it could give him- Oh, that's me. Hey, you uh, got a photo of me early. Huh. Ah. Huh. Look at that. It's a photo of me. Wait. So this is what Sally was hiding. She was just too embarrassed to tell me she had a photo of me in her room. Haha, <laughs> she's so cute. Hold on. Have I ever... been photographed like this? It'd be pretty easy, you look like the same all the time. When does Sally have this photo? Did she take it secretly? Are the other photos of me too? Let's see. It is me! Wait, no it isn't. He just looks like me. What the heck? Oops, the photo fell out of the frame. Huh? There's some red writing on the back of this photo. The most handsome guy ever. So, Sally's secret is that she likes to sneak photos of hot guys? That's all? Huh? The windows are closed. So where's this wind coming from? It's pretty strong, too. Enough to blow the other two frames down. Oh no. Oh no. Whose photos are the other two of? Another handsome guy. There's a writing on the back. Body. And the other one. Of course, another good looking guy. What's written on the back this time? Limp. Oh no! Oh! Oh, okay, what about mine? What's around the back? Head. What do these mean? Are they the best looking parts of our body? I mean, what do these mean? Are they the best looking parts of our bodies? Sometimes I really can't forget what Sally's thinking. Now that I think about it, we've actually only known each other for a short time. She's my girlfriend, but I don't know much about her. Was a wind blowing from there before? Um... Hello? There's someone next to us. Huh. There are stairs going down. But Sally never said there was a basement in her house. Ah! What? Nothing personal, kid. Sally, I told you not to open the door to my room. Bad ending one. Pandora's box. Four out of ten. Fitting was the four ending. So you are doing some weird alchemy stuff. <sighs> Was that just a terrible nightmare? I dream I found some stairs to the basement in Sally's room. But what happened before and after? 
Why can't I remember? I have to go in and take a look. So we're gonna go in. Look, it's just like in my dream. Sally's secrets must be at the bottom of these stairs. Why am I so nervous though? It's just a basement, right? Is Sally really the Sally I know? Go for it. Ugh. It stinks. What's the stench? I'm down here already. I can't go back without at least taking a look. What's that? A pair of feet. <laughs> Could it be a dead body? Ah! It really is a dead body. A man with no head. Wait, there's something weird about this corpse. A close look reveals that the limbs are sewn into the body with Fred. What's more, the skin tone of the limbs and bodies don't match. So just saying it's been put together with pieces from different men. I called it! Why is there dead body like this in Sally's house? Who killed these people? Who sewed them together? And why? Run. Whatever, I gotta get out of here. Arg. Wielding a kitchen knife in her right hand, Sally stabs Marty in the stomach. I told you not to open the door to my room. Arg. The cold blade slices Marty's. <laughs> you just gotta finish this off, huh? Yeah. Blarg. Hey, your eyes turn red. <laughs> Sadly straddles Marty and lays herself on him. A writhing tongue slinks out of her mouth. And she preaches a lick and suck on his face. Man, it feels like I'm some kind of weird ASMR going on. Marty wants to scream, but he can't. John, John, you're such a tease. Why were you hiding from me? Don't you have any idea how much I missed you? This girl can't be Sally. Who the heck is she? Or was it Sally I knew just an act from the beginning? What's the persona this girl made up? John, you don't have to wait anymore. I'll separate you from this useless guy right away. The girl reaches the kitchen knife, a pie, and then thrusts it with all her mind into Marty. The final piece I need. Soon I'll be done sewing up my love. <laughs> Bad ending two. The final piece. You had to lick me first. Doing like some JoJo villain thing. Ah! <laughs> Was that just a terrible nightmare? I dreamed I found some stairs to the basement in Sally's room. But what happened before and after? Why can't I remember? I have to go in and take a look. This is deja vu. I've never been here before. I really feel like I've gone down these stairs before. So now we'll be able to investigate. The stench. This hallway. Have I been here before? It's a dead body man without a head. Why is there a dead body like this in Sally's house? What are those things on the table? I'll at least take a look before I go. It's a group photo of three people. Okay, John. Who's the guy in the middle? Why does he look so much like me? Thank you, though, John. I see. So this must be John. This one next to him is Sally, and the other one is... Sally again? Hmm. Well, you guys were twins. What the heck? 
How come there are two Sallys? Is there gonna be a twist within a twist? Her name is Sarah, which is named Sarah. Sarah. Wait. You need Sally's sister Sarah. The one who passed away in the car accident. So they were twins. Huh? Wait. When did Sally tell me that her sister died in a car accident? I think I heard that from her, but I can't remember when. Why well, am I always like this lately? Oops, the photo fell out of the frame. Huh? There's some red writing on the back of this photo. John Checklist. Body, limbs, we need a head. We need a good old-fashioned John head. So Sally's secrets are way worse than I thought. Okay, so she's not even dating me as a substitute for her ex. She just wants me as a piece to recreate John. Run, boy, run. Crap, it's Sally. I told you not to open the door to my room. Well, I guess it's as good a time as any. Sally slowly raises her right hand to reveal the kitchen knife, clutched in it. In that moment, I got a funny feeling that something was out of place. But that feeling was immediately overtaken by fear. Grab one of those books! Oh jeez, oh jeez. Don't panic. I have to calm down and quick. Moni hastily takes two deep breaths. What? Are you getting ready to die? I saw a video online. That said, at this distance, even a police officer with a gun is no match for an opponent with a knife. Yeah, it's a 20 feet rule, actually. So all I can do now is to run for it. Smack. Marty violently flings a photo frame in his hand at Sally's face. Ah! Yeah! Up the stairs now from Sally's room, I tumbled and scrambled my way to the front door and burst out. It was in that somehow... I realized what had filled out of place. Oh, the left hand thing! Never I told you, we had to pay attention to that! Sally's left handed. Why does she have the knife in her right hand? Something a sound comes to the door behind Marty. Boy, you keep running. You keep running, you don't stop! Marty panics thinking that Sally's come after him. But instead it sounds like two girls fighting. What? How? Is it you, Sarah? Sarah, what are you doing with a knife? Where's Marty? Get off of me, Sally. What is going on? What the heck is going on? Thank you, Marty. Does this mean it wasn't Sally who pulled the knife on me? But her sister, Sarah. It could also be, um... Oh, you know what it is? Sarah's ghost. But I thought Sarah was already dead. I'm on way, Harl. Ah! Sally! I'm sorry, Sally. Maybe I should have opened the door and rushed in to save Sally. I was too panicked and scared in that moment. After running a few blocks, I found a police station on the side of the road. I rushed to the officers for help and asked them to follow me back to Sally's house. But maybe I was too incoherent of panic. Or maybe my explanation didn't make Sally sound threatening enough. The officers thought it was just another couple spat. And didn't understand how serious the situation was. When they finally half-heartedly agreed to come with me, there was no one at Sally's house anymore. Only the headless corpse in the basement proved the horror that had taken place there. Oh no, we're being followed. A few days ago, a man visiting his girlfriend found a dead male body with no head in her house and was nearly killed. He fled to the nearby police station for help. The suspect is still at large. Police were asking for any information from the public. Lock those windows, good. It was it Sally who tried to kill me that day? Or was it Sarah? Who's supposed to be dead. But yeah, you see, you know when the eyes flip to, like, red? That's Sarah. Um, but here's the thing, why would Sarah want to revive John so badly? Like, is there, you know, another little angle there? Who knows? The police still haven't found her. The past few days I've been living in fear. Because that day when I took the officers to the basement, only the corpse was there. Sally disappeared. Sarah disappeared, and the knife disappeared, and... That John checklist disappeared, too. The police are looking for her, and she is looking for me. She's still looking for John's final piece. Who 
is she? What is she exactly? And where could she be now? That's also why the amulet, when she grabbed it, reacted. Because Sarah is an evil ghost. Ha. Ha. Ha ha ha. Looks like my questions are about to be answered. Because right now she's... Abandoning Triple in front of my house. Oh, I like that little segue. It's like, because right now she's in front of my house. 6 out of 10. Ah! <sighs> Was that just a terrible nightmare? I dreamed I found some stairs to the basement in Sally's room. What happened before and after? Why can't I remember? I have to go in and take a look. Yeah. You know, it'd be nice if you helped me a little bit. Aside from just, you know, making me suffer and relive these loops. Wow, huh. The stairs, the basement of this corpse. Some of everything appears just as I expect. What is this, a B-horror movie? Or some horror adventure game? Wink. After this, I don't anything I find will surprise me. I don't know, let's see. Sarah's diary. Hmm, see, Sarah's diary. People still write in diaries in this day and age. The newest entries are pretty recent, too. Sarah, Sarah. Isn't she Sally's sister? John, I miss you so much. Where are you? Why are you hiding from me? I found you, John. Did you really think I wouldn't find you if you hid yourself in Sally's boyfriend? As long as I pretend to be Sally, the guy lets his guard down around me. But of course Sally's boyfriend is just as stupid as Sally. John is back with me again. But after a closer look, it's just the body that belongs to John. Not the limbs or head. I don't need those pieces that aren't John's. I'll take them to the hills beyond the house and bury them. That's a remote place. Nobody will find the body parts. I just have to bury them nice and deep so that stray dogs don't dig them up. Then I need to go find the rest of John. But I swear I will. But John was Sally's boyfriend. See, that's what I'm saying. That's the weird part. Why would Sarah be obsessed over John? Of course, my implication is that John was having an affair, or Sarah at least was hoping John would have an affair. I take back what I said earlier. This is way more than just surprising. This Sarah is crazy. How could she have managed to fool Sally's boyfriend just by pretending to be Sally? Because they really look alike, or maybe they're twins. But somehow I remember Sally saying that Sarah died in a car accident. Does Sally have some kind of reason to hide the fact that Sarah is alive? Or could it be that Sally doesn't know that Sarah is alive? Is that even possible? Wait, if that's true... Could it be possible that Sarah girl was the one dating me, pretending to be Sally? Is the girl I saw today really Sally? Oh no, she's coming. I told you not to open the door to my room. Are you Sally or Sarah? Who the heck are you? Aw, oh, silly. I know you know already. She slowly raises her right hand to reveal a kitchen knife. I've heard that even identical twins can have different dominant hands. I knew it. You're not Sally. She's left-handed. Okay, fine. You've realized I'm not Sally. But so what? So take this! Smack. Marty throws a diary in his hand as, her, as hard as he can at Sarah's face. Ah! Yeah! I tumbled and scrambled my way to the front door and burst out. Wait, what about Sally? Is she still in the house with that crazy murderer? Damn it, why did I think of Sally sooner? Something that sound comes from the door behind Marty. What? How? Is it you, Sarah? 
Sarah, what are you doing with a knife? Where's Marty? Let me go, Sally. No way, I won't let go. Out of my way or I'll... Ah! Sally! Marty, run! What have you done to Sally? I'll kill you! What? There's only one person on his side. Sarah. The knife in her hand is stained with blood. Her hand is paused midair and she stares blankly ahead. That's why she was zoning out in the kitchen. Hey, you. Hmm. Well, well. It's you. I thought you ran away. Where's Sally? What did you do to her? She bought time for you. Why would you waste that by coming back to die? You're just as stupid as her exes. You monster! Ah! Marty raises his arm to defend himself from the knife, but gets slashed. Ha! Huh. Such a loser. Marty feels a surge of regression at these words. Shut the hell up! Ah! Sarah is knocked down and the back of her head slams against the edge of the cabinet. <laughs> oh no, are the cops gonna arrest me? Cause they're like, oh, you murdered these people in here. It's like, no, there's a secret room under the place. How would I have, like, built that? How dare you hurt Sally, you monster. Cursing loudly, Marty rams his foot into Sarah several times. Sarah does not resist at all and lies there, unmoving and in a grotesque position. Hey! Hey! Why aren't you moving? All I did was kick her a few times. No, it takes mopping her head once to put you down. Okay, whatever. I should go find Sally right now. Sally! Sally! But no matter how hard I looked for Sally, she was nowhere to be found. So tell me what happened. Who slashed your arm that day? My girlfriend Sally's sister, Sarah. Let me get this straight. You fought back against this Sarah in self-defense and killed her by accident. What? She's dead? Yes. How could this have happened? I just... I just... Calm down. Do you know who put together the headless corpse in the basement? It was Sarah. She killed Sally's ex-boyfriends and sewed their body parts together. She's gonna kill me, too. Sarah again. That's right. Is something wrong? Your testimony doesn't match the facts at all. What do you mean? Sarah, the girl you mentioned, died in a car accident two years ago. An official death certificate was issued. She's most certainly dead. Then, who the hell tried to kill me? And who... Was that I... Wait, no. According to some dental records, the identity of the deceased was Miss Sarah Sweet. That's not possible. I really did hear Sally and Sarah arguing. Sarah definitely stabbed Sally with a knife and, and... Please, I need you to calm down. I'm sorry to say this, but based on the evidence at hand, there were only two people in that house that day. You and Miss Sarah Sweet. There has to be a mistake. It's just not possible. Oh, what? The ghost! Huh? Ah, uh, ah, uh, She's Sarah! She's right there! Excuse me. John. John. Ah! There you are. John's final piece. Stay the heck away from me! Bad ending four. Phantom. 7 out of 10? How are there three more endings? Listen up. I'm only gonna say this once. You have to thrust the Nazar right in the eyes of an evil spirit. Got it. But why? A vindictive evil spirit can curse a human with just its gaze. The Nazar works by repelling the malice in that gaze giving the evil spirit a taste of its own medicine. 
I think I had two dreams. One seems to have been a nightmare. The other was, well, I don't remember. But somehow, I feel like I should hold on to that Nazar. Now it's the bottom left books. Wow, huh? The stairs of the basement have this corpse. So my everything appears just as I expect. What is this, a B-horror movie? Some horror adventure game? Wink. After this. I doubt anything I find will surprise me. There are two diaries here. That one is newer and this one looks relatively old. I'll take a look at this older one. Sarah's diary. Belongs to Sally's sister. Didn't her sister die in a car accident two years ago? On Sally's birthday, too. Anyway, let's see what this diary says. I'm sorry, Sally. I only said that because I was angry. I didn't really mean I don't want you anymore. Sally said that Sarah must have hated her since they were children. But I guess she was mistaken. So what went wrong with their relationship? I was the one who fell in love with John first. How dare Sally confess her love to him. I may have never said anything. But how could she have not noticed? Looks like this entry was written in middle school. So, it sounds like Sarah started hating Sally because they fell in love with the same guy. How time flies. Sally has now been dating John for five years. But I've never spoken, once spoken out about my feelings for him. Sally used to be such a crybaby in a tag-along. But now she's a confident woman who speaks for herself. Meanwhile, I'm still the girl who makes dolls to keep herself company. And to pretend I don't need to be loved. I've been so full of anger and jealousy towards Sally, but she's always been good to me. I hate how narrow my and ugly I am compared to my sister. So did she hate Sally or not? Maybe she had mixed feelings of both hate and love. Tomorrow's our birthday. Mom came home for the occasion, but that never happens. Sally and John are also looking forward to the outing tomorrow. If I take this opportunity to confess everything to them, maybe just maybe, I'll be able to let go of my feelings for John. And that's when they end up in a car accident. Oh, jeez. Why? Why? Huh? Why is Sally the one who survived? Why is Sarah the one who died? This diary. There's more to it. John, why did you disappear? I'll look for you, I'll find you, and I'll kill whoever gets in my way. Put her hand paused mid-air, and she switched blankly a hand. This is mean. Sarah became an evil spirit and possessed Sally to do all those horrible things. Mori took out the Nazar amulet. I'm gonna save you, Sally. This has to go wrong, because there's like three more endings we have to get. I'll send a message to Bruce just in case. Sally's possessed, please save her. If I die, everything I own is yours. As long as he smells money, he'll definitely come. If anything, he's just gonna wait for you to die and just take your stuff. That's how Bruce works. This way. I'm all set. She's coming. Okay. Bring it. I told you not to open the door to my room. This isn't your room. That body isn't yours. It's Sally's. Marty used the Nazar amulet. Did it work? Ah! What? That thing wards off evil spirits, doesn't it? Unfortunately for you, I'm not an evil spirit. Funny how that works. Ah! You're not an evil spirit. Then, what the heck are you? I mean, maybe it's one of those, like, technicalities of, like, evil as a perspective? Why don't you guess? Blarg. Uh. Morty is set up several times in the abdomen and the wounds feel like they're burning. He breaks out in a cold sweat as he feels his body heat draining away. Does that hurt? Then I'll put you out of your misery. Sarah raises her right hand ready to slash Marty. Open. 
What? But the knife does not come down. Someone has grabbed Sarah's arm. And that's not over then. Sarah herself. Your left hand has a right wrist clutched firmly, stopping the knife. I didn't expect you to wake up. This is a, the first time we're awake at the same time, isn't it? Is it you, Sally? What? How? Is it you, Sarah? Sarah, what are you doing with a knife? Why are you stabbing Marty? Oh no, this is just, you know, this is just Sarah just greeting me. Why? Because I want to remove John's final piece from him. What? You always have dreams where you're searching for John's arms and legs, don't you? Did you really think those were just dreams? So all those dreams were true. That's right. So it really was me who caused our deaths. Caused our deaths? You murdered them? No. Did you really believe it was because of some stupid curse? Don't play dumb. You know you did it. In their most vulnerable moment, you strangled them both to death with your own hands. Like a black widow, spider. You're the one who did it, not me. What are you talking about? After all this, you still want to blame me for everything. I am you. Don't say that. Sally, don't listen. Don't listen to her nonsense. And now you're about to kill Marty. No. Sally's left hand, the one holding onto her right, suddenly gets stronger. Marty, run! Stop resisting. Sarah breaks free of Sally's left hand and slashes her left elbow. Ah! The scene almost looks oddly comical. But Marty knows that Sally's being attacked because she's trying to buy him enough time. Sally! <laughs> Shouldn't you be more worried about yourself? I should. Move. Get moving. Uh, my head is spinning. You also could have, you know, helped her in the struggle by holding down that other side of the body. Marty's bleeding too much and is about to pass out. At that moment, Sally suddenly takes a deep breath. What do you think you're doing? Ah! What? Are you crazy? If you kill me, he'll die too. Marty, thank you for loving a girl like me. Wait, okay, I'll let Marty... Sarah, even if you let Marty go, I'm not gonna let you off. I'm ending all this, along with you. Ah! Stop, don't be stupid, Sally. Forget about me. Find someone who truly deserves your love. No! <laughs> Sally. What? No, this can't... Sally! Ah! Ah! Is this... a hospital? Jade? How are you doing? Bruce. And you are... I'm Brucey's partner. Jade. Don't you remember who I am? Right, sorry. I'm just a little confused right now. Where's Sally? Well, um, Sally... Ta-da! Oh my gosh, Sally. I'm so relieved you're okay. Yeah. It was a miracle. Bruce got your message and came to the house just in time to save us. I knew you'd come through for us, Bruce. So then, what happened to Sarah? I'm not really sure either, but Bruce got rid of her. I never expected I'd say goodbye to my sister like this. But then, will they be able to reconcile with your sister? It's fine, Marty. Everything's fine. And that really matters anymore. You're right, I'm here. And you're here with me. What could be more important than that? He's just seeing things, or it's a ghost? Who is he talking to? 
Who else? The princess he failed to save, of course. Unfortunately, what he was seeing wasn't actually Sally's spirit, but only a phantom he created to escape reality. It's probably post-traumatic stress disorder, plus visual and auditory hallucinations. All that just because one girlfriend died. That boy sure was infatuated. Well, when he met her, he just lost his parents. His only friend. And his memory. Even worse, as soon as he woke up in the hospital, he was thrown in that paranormal hazard. It makes sense that he turned to Sally for emotional support. To get through his desperate situation. You can't blame him if you can't live without Sally. If I die, will you become like that too? No. Wake up. You're not my girlfriend. We can't do anything from now. We're too late. What are you talking about? As long as he stays in that state, They'll always be together, till death do them part. I'd say we came at just the right time to witness this magical moment. Oh my god, you open your eyes! Congratulations, then I guess. Bad ending 5, till death do them part. So Brucey and them, um, they can see and handle ghosts, so like, if there was one in there, they would know. I hope you understand now how Nazar deals with evil spirits. Okay. But are there any evil spirits out there? They are so strong that Nazar won't do anything. Huh. Of course. What kind of evil spirits? Before answering that, let me ask you a question. Why are humans afraid of evil spirits? Well, because they can levitate and go through walls? Plus cast deadly curses and kill humans? But there are certain evil spirits that can levitate or go through walls, or even cast deadly curses. But they've killed far more humans than any ordinary evil spirit. Can you tell what those are? You mean... humans? Huh. So your brain actually works. Okay then, Mr. Master Exorcist. How do we deal with that type of evil spirit? Simple. Just act even crazier. Than the evil spirit. And when we do act like the mask? To pull my Jim Carrey impression? <laughs> I've had two dreams. One seems to have been a nightmare. The other was... Well, I don't remember. I remember something about... Acting crazier than an evil spirit. Maybe the twist is not a ghost? Double layer twist. Wow, haha. <laughs> Stairs to basement of this corpse. Somehow everything appears just as I expect. What is this, a B-horror movie? Or some horror adventure game? Wink. After this, I doubt anything I find will surprise me. Consultation note, Sarah Sweet. What? Are these Sally's medical records or something? These aren't for some rote medical examination. How could such an important document left out here? The client is a 20-year-old college student. When she was very young, she lost her father. River did not show her adequate love, and she was rejected by her sister. The reason she sought my consultation was that she witnessed the tragic death of her sister and boyfriend in a car accident and developed post-traumatic stress syndrome, suspected to be accompanied by dissociative amnesia. Dissociative amnesia. Okay. So apparently it's a condition where the person loses certain painful memories to protect themselves. The initial inconsultation revealed that the client tends to suppress herself and cater to others believing she does not deserve to be loved. This could be a result of her lonely childhood. Her boyfriend John's love for her could have provided a corrective emotional experience, 
but the client believes she caused his death, making her even less accepting of herself. Made for Sally, John was the first person who ever gave her love. She must have hated herself for causing his death. A few days ago, while sorting through her sister's belongings, the client read her sister's diary and realized she had never been aware of her sister's feelings. Exacerbating her disassociative symptoms. What happens when the symptoms are exacerbated? The client's behavior today was unusual and showed strong aggressiveness. Afterwards, she called to apologize. However, the reason for the apology was because... She had forgotten about the appointment and didn't show up. Wait, this? It was confirmed that she had no memory of the consultation today. This may be a sign of disassociative identity disorder and should be monitored. This symptom. Could this be what they call a split personality? The client has a new boyfriend. It's going to be seen as her first step out of trauma. But today she said in a panic that she realized someone was clearing her sister's diary. She feared it was her sister haunting her. The therapist read the diary of her consent and found the tone of the new entries were closer to that of the client's altered personality than her sister's. The degree to which the alter is involved in the client's life should be observed. The degree of involvement, huh? An awful lot, I'd say. She couldn't accept John's death, so she wanted to reconstruct him. And she chose to make him out of her boyfriends, including me. So my girlfriend really is a psycho killer. Somehow, I'm not very scared. So is this bad ending going to be, we take her out? After all, the one who did all that was Sally's altar. And the love that I felt from Sally was definitely real. <laughs> Sally has trouble accepting herself because she lacked love in her childhood. I may not be able to give her enough love to make up for that. Even so, I swear I will... Continue to love her? Ha! Ha ha! Ha It's my choice. I won't let anyone stop me. I can't live without Sally in my life anymore. You guys, uh, have more in common than we thought, huh? She's coming. Go ahead and come. I told you not to open the door to my room. Your room, huh? You're not Sally. But you're not Sarah either. Oh? You're a shadow. The part of Sally that she refuses to accept. You're her altar. It doesn't matter what I am. The only thing that matters is that soon I'll have someone who loves me. Because my John is about to be complete. It's fine if no one loves me. I just need to sew one that does for myself. That's what Sarah taught Sally, and that's what Sarah taught me. Remember what I said. Why don't you check out the Sarah doll? If Sarah really didn't have any love for you, she wouldn't have made this doll for you at all. And now, there's a guy who loves you standing right in front of you. Why do you pretend like you don't see him? Oops. Sorry, I'm not talking to you, Alter. Wake up, Sally. I'm trying to get through to you. You think you can wake up Sleeping Beauty up with that bullshit? What are you, Pris Charming? Or some protagonist in a dating sim? This game was advertised as a dating sim. Sally's Alter slowly raises her right hand to reveal a kitchen knife. It's better if you never speak again. You'll be more attractive that way. Ouch! <laughs> Marnie spreads out his arms ready to embrace the altar's knife. What? Sally, if you don't wake up soon, never one of your boyfriends is going to be butchered. Are you really okay with that? And that's right. I'm using emotional blackmail. 
What the hell? You're crazy. Says the woman that's been making a Frankenstein. <laughs> Ow! What? The knife pierces through the skin of Marty's midriff. But the cut is not deep. Someone has grabbed the altar's hand. And there's none other than... Sally, it's you. Sally's left hand has her right wrist cut firmly. Stopping the knife. I can't believe his bullshit really woke you up. Call what you want. It opened my eyes. I... Shouldn't think I'm inferior and loved. You've been playing a tragic heroine for 20 years. And now you want to change yourself. If that's just a little too convenient. Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am? Of course, I... Am you. And won't allow that part me to kill any more of my boyfriends. Sally puts more force in her left hand and suppresses the right hand controlled by her altar. Don't be fooled. He doesn't really love you. He's just hungry for your body like all the other guys. Huh? Sally's left hand falters slightly. As a healthy functioning guy, I'll admit I love Sally for her body just as much as her mind. What's wrong with being hungry for her body? Jeez, Barney. You have to say that out loud. Then tell me. If you're so hungry... Are you really okay with the fact that she didn't save herself for you? As a healthy guy, you say you don't mind that at all. Marty? Oh, come on. What is this, the Middle Ages? Look, I don't even mind that Sally killed a couple of guys. Oh, yeah. Why would I care about her virginity? Are you kidding? Like, that's supposed to make you feel better. <laughs> Sally pokes a knife into Marty a little. Uh, sorry about that. If you're unsure, I can comfort you. If it's a promise you need, I can give you one. But what really matters, Sally, is for you to believe that you deserve love first, or you'll never receive it. Do you actually think... a psycho like her really deserves your love? It's perfect, actually. Sally and I, we're both crazy. We're a match made in heaven. Do us a favor and go to sleep already. Stop being such a third wheel. Marty's right. I want to believe in him, and because he believes in me, I want to believe in myself. Sure, believe in him, and yourself, but when you get betrayed, you know it's gonna hurt like hell, and you really stand that. If that happens, all I have to do is wake you up and have you kill him. Um... Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Interesting. I'll look forward to seeing if you'll ever need to wake me up. Is this bad and gonna be like we do a little time skip? And Marty screws up. Good night, Alter Ego. The Alter relinquished control of the right hand and the knife clattered to the ground. Sally looked dazed for a moment but immediately came to. She even looked refreshed, as if she had wakened from a long dream. It seemed the Alter had entered a deep sleep. I don't know how to say this, but I feel like you see through me. That's what it's like to be a couple. Just seeing each other's good sides isn't enough. I'm worried that I might hurt you again one day. Is there any kind of love where people never hurt each other in some way? Then Marty, can I make a decision that I know is going to hurt you? Are you breaking up with me? What decision is that? I want to turn myself in and confess my guilt to my ex-boyfriend's families. Why now? Why do you have to leave me when we finally can be together? Marty, listen to me, please. It's because I want to be with you that I think I should pay for my sins first. I have girly dreams about romance, you know. I want to be your girlfriend as a normal girl, not as a psycho killer. Of course, no matter what I do, the people I killed won't come back to life. Still, I have to take responsibility for the things I've done. But... I don't care! Psycho killer or not, you're my girlfriend! Morning wanted to hold Sally's hand, but... My hands are covered in blood. I don't want to taint yours. But if one day my hands are clean, and we have the opportunity to meet again, will you... 
hold my hand then. I gave my hands 32. Is this the true ending right there? Okay. Okay. Thank you for saying you'll wait for me. If it takes too long, just forget about me. Don't put off your own happiness just for me. I'll always be waiting for you. You're so silly. After waking up, it wasn't happily ever after for my sleeping beauty. Reality confronted her like a thicket of thorns. Sally was not only tried criminally, but was also subjected to online abuse. Before Sally was convicted, some unscrupulous reporters sensationalized her as the prettiest murderer ever, publicizing her real name, her appearance, and even her mental condition. Strangers Online not only raided Sally's face and body, but also jokingly called her the Angel Face Killer, and made a big deal about her illness and gender. At some point, the stress got to Sally so badly that she involuntarily awakened her altar in public. That scene also went viral. She sick lock her up, they can't let her loose like your others. Oh, getting a girlfriend is rough these days. She could treat like an ATM and she could even kill you. And after all that, you could find she's damaged goods. That's not the one, that's a woman in war. Okay, well, I don't know if you guys are in Where are you all in the world? Stop arguing. She's actually asking Creed to reduce her sentence. They don't know anything about Sally. Why don't- why do they talk like they do? Not a single one of them really cares what kind of person Sally is. Losing Sally has made my life all bad again. And seeing all the mockery, abuse, and cursing hurled at Sally made me suffer even more. But on second thought, maybe the reactions are just normal. Maybe I'm the abnormal one. I haven't been dating Sally for long. Why am I so obsessed with her? I don't really know. I just feel like I've known Sally for a long time. Even longer than she's known me. Huh. What am I saying? Of course I want to wait. But I don't think I can bear this any longer. Because I really can't live without you. But I'll keep waiting for you to keep my promise. I'll continue lying to myself that I can wait. The good ending. Waiting. Okay, so yeah, that means the final ending is gonna be getting our hands dirty. Oh no. Um, because all the games in this series, they've all been kind of, uh. They've all been kind of twisted in their own way. They, they're doing it like a, a kind of a schlocky way, but like in a twisted way. Yeah, extra ending. No, I've had enough. I don't want to lie to myself anymore. I should have kept Sally by my side even if it meant getting my hands dirty. Uh, uh, if I like I could rewind time. Sup? Huh? <laughs> Did I hear someone say they want to rewind time? Who's there? This isn't the first time I've heard this voice. You mortals are so eager to extol your love, courage, hope, and whatever else. Think you can always make choices. That you can achieve something. Yet whenever you're overwhelmed with despair, you mainly pray for a miracle. I do love how adorably pathetic the mortal existence is. Very well. I shall play Cupid for you and that girl, and take pity on you of the miracle of rewinding time. What? So those precognitive dreams weren't dreams at all. Remember, every time I regret a decision to spare, Mia descended we one time and I forgot everything. Now remember, all the previous loops. I accepted Sally, misunderstood her, got stabbed by her, even went insane for her. In every loop, I naively thought I was in control of making my own choices. But actually, my fate was already written. A twine of Sally's. Which just gestures me to dance in someone else's script. In this world, there are beings beyond the reach of human understanding. And we humans may be nothing more than playthings that exist to please these beings. I suppose that's what, what Nia meant by the mortal existence, huh? Hmm. 
In that case, I'll just accept it for what it is. My hands are covered in blood, I don't want to taint yours. But one day my hands are clean. If you have the opportunity to meet again, will you... Hold my hand, then. This time, the everyone time back to before I made my last choice. That when I woke up on the sofa. I might even say that the deities were surprisingly considerate. Definitely not good by any means. At least this time I have to admit I'm thankful. Marty? Marty! Oops, sorry, Sally. I was just thinking about something. I knew it. You don't want to wait. My hands will be clean, do you? So what are we gonna do? I think we're gonna get my hands dirty, too. <laughs> what are you talking about? Why do you care if your hands are bloody? Just get my hands dirty, too. Marty picks up the kitchen knife from the ground. Marty? I figured out a way for us to be together forever. Marty, what are you doing? Marty? What? Marty takes a knife mercilessly to the headless corpse. What do you think you're doing? Can you tell? We just have to get rid of the corpse properly. And you won't have to turn yourself in. So I'm chopping up the parts again. Why didn't I think of such a simple solution the last time? A simple solution? For starters, where we could even dispose of this? Everything's coming together. There are those hills behind your house. Your exes are buried there. And they've never been found. We just have to bury stuff nice and deep to prevent stray dogs from digging them up. How could you... possibly know that? We need to bear the diaries and photos, too. Especially the photos with red writing on the back. No will be trouble if someone sees those. There's red writing on the back of the photos. I know nothing about that. Of course you don't! Because I know you! A lot better than you know yourself. Marty, listen to me, please. What I'm trying to say is, you don't have to go that far! Sally. Compared to having them watch you turn yourself in, being abused online and having a split personality relapse in public. Taking apart a corpse and getting rid of it is nothing. Nothing. I mean, it's not like I'm a random stranger. I'm your boyfriend, aren't I? Now. And always. Forever. From now on, the fact you killed some people is... A secret. Just between the two of us. Huh! Bruce and Jade, you want to comment on this situation? I'm Sally, a female college student. A couple of years ago, I was in a horrible car accident where I lost my first love and my only sister. It was traumatic for me and I'm still adjusting to this life. I really started going out with a boy. His name is Marnie. And he loves me so much that he only has eyes for me. To the point that it's somewhat terrifying. Because I start to feel that the me in his eyes doesn't just include me, but also something beyond the reach of my own understanding. He's hiding some secrets from me. Some secrets that are unspeakable. The extra ending. My boyfriend's secrets. Next. Case 3. True Cannibal Boy. Oh, okay. So that's it for Extra Case My Girlfriend's Secrets. So I did not play the previous game, um, Case 2. I did play Case 1 and Case 0. Um, and I also did not play the Isekai game. So I know for a fact Marty Stu did get isekai whether it was just a coma thing or not, that's the god or whatever that talks to him here. I'm assuming eventually he woke up, the how the timeline goes. And then it's case... Tr 2? Yeah, case 2. Which is, um... 
I never I, I, I kind of looked at. It seems like it's like a weird action RPG, top-down RPG maker thing. I don't know. And that's where he meets Sally Sweet and Brucey and Jade. And then this leads into the this game, Baxter Case My Girlfriend's Secrets. The events of the previous game almost like not mattering much to the story of this whatsoever. And then looks like we're going back to the Cannibal Boy case to an extent. I'm not going to spoil that game fully, but it's interesting we're returning to that that story. If you're interested in the, uh, the every games I've played in this series, the case one and case zero, um, you know, check out the post screen where I like put the little like clickable links up. But yeah, this is kind of return to form in the sense like I think it's the closest to the Cannibal Boy one from what I've seen. And like all the games, there's basically there's a twisted element to the characters and not just like, oh, someone's a yonder or anything. They get like twisted logic. Although I do think it's interesting to have kind of like somewhat evil protags and characters because it's, you know, it's a change of pace. There is a very firm schlocky element to the uh, whole series, which I actually don't mind. I, I think these stories are kind of like over the top in more ways than one, so you really do want them to lean more schlocky than serious. Although this one did actually get a little bit more serious in spots than the, uh, the previous ones I noticed. If I had to rank it, I'd say Cannibal Boy is still my favorite, but Cannibal Boy is more of a um, true visual novel. This one's kind of like a visual novel. Cannibal Boy is an actual visual novel. But I like this one to an extent too. I think it's kind of held together because of the twisted element. If you just had happy ending or just bad ending, which you saw variations of that throughout this, then it would be kind of a fairly um, almost standard yandere kind of story. But that last little bit like twisted meta element kind of hook is what kind of just gives a little bit more of a distinct edge. So I like the ending and then like a little bit of a, that's a little different way. <laughs> anyway, so if you go watch you play Extra Case My Girlfriend's Secrets, I'll see you guys later and take it easy.